Let me tell you why neither failure nor success matters at all by talking about Queen Elizabeth II. So before I can explain how you can take action over this fear of failure that you might have been feeling, we first need to understand what the fear of failure actually is. And I found that there are three types of fear of failure. They are procrastination, self-doubt, and perfectionism. Now I have found that for myself, procrastination is usually a case of me pushing the nitty gritty. I feel unmotivated to do the small tasks which will probably get me success, but I find them boring and as a result I have no motivation to do this. Now I found what helps me get over procrastination is setting myself a timer for 10 minutes. Usually the hardest part of anything when it comes to procrastination is getting started. So assuming I set myself the 10 minutes and I say okay whatever happens at the very least I'm gonna dedicate 10 minutes to doing this task. Usually what happens then after 10 minutes you're like well I might as well continue now because I've started 10 minutes anyway. And just like that, you've managed to get over procrastination. Let's jump into number two, self-doubt. Now self-doubt's a tricky one, I'll be honest. Usually this creeps in and we question our abilities and competencies to talk on a certain topic. So here's a mindset trick that's helped me deal with this problem. The realization that everyone is living for the first time. This for me implied that no matter how much people manage to convince you, they're just winging it as well. But if that analogy is not enough to help you, which I would completely understand, I recommend reading some books on the topic of self-confidence and self-compassion. And now let's get on with number three, perfectionism. When I was still in music, I struggled with perfectionism tremendously. At some point, I think I had 571 projects of which I only ever finished 12. And of those 12, I only ever released two solo songs. So if there's someone that understands the struggle of perfectionism, I get it. And to be honest, there's only really ever one story that helped me get over this issue and that comes from the book Made to Stick by Chip and Dan Heath. They give an example of a photography professor who split his class into two groups. One group was tasked with making the best picture they can but they could only submit one picture. Then the second group was tasked with making 100 pictures without any quality standards. And what the professor found was when the students at the end of the year handed in their results, the ones who took 100 pictures made significant significantly better photos than the people who only took one. So the learning that I took away from that story is if you want to get really good at something much faster than most, they have to take as many pictures as you can. And with understanding those three types of fears, we can now work on reframing our mindset before moving on to the final segment. So if you've made it this far, just bear with me a little longer. Because in part two, we need to reframe failure as an opportunity. Now I understand that most people will probably tell you at this point, look to the likes of JK Rowling or Thomas Edison who made thousands of attempts before eventually being successful. I'm not going to do that because I know for myself whenever I heard those stories I actually thought well maybe they just got lucky. So instead let's assume the opposite. Let's assume you fail. So what? Let me tell you why neither failure nor success matters at all by talking about Queen Elizabeth II. I'm borrowing this concept from Alex Hermosi, but in two months, Queen Elizabeth will have been dead for a year. During her reign, she made countless of public successes, but also public failures. She was one of the wealthiest people to have ever lived, and she was a female monarch during a time where that was almost unheard of. And I'm pretty sure that almost 90% of the world will know who Queen Elizabeth was. Now be truly honest to yourself. In the time since she's passed, how often have you really thought of Queen Elizabeth II? I'm willing to bet probably not once, just like 99% of the other people out there. So if this woman that made history does not cross your mind nine months after she passes away, then what on earth are you truly worrying about with whether or not people will see you fail or succeed? It literally doesn't matter what you do. And that realization then becomes an absolute liberation because anything is possible. And with that reframe, we come to the final part of this video, which is what you probably came here for, because this isn't the first time that I've spoken about the importance of taking action. And yet I feel like most people still don't properly understand the topic. So I'm going to regurgitate it a little bit, because I've come to realize that the real problem with people's ability to take action is actually a lack of creativity, because it's quite easy to come up with countless excuses as to why something won't work. For example, we need more money, more skills, more time, you name it. But I've now become come to believe that almost every problem
problem is solvable. And I'll try and prove it. I did this series in which I interviewed students on what, whether or not they would want to start their own business. Out of the eight I interviewed, three of them said they would want to start their restaurant, but that they couldn't because of financial means. But what if that wasn't a problem? What if we say we get creative enough that instead of opening a restaurant where you probably would need a lot of funds, we create a dine at home experience. I'm willing to bet you have a home, you have a kitchen, probably even have a table with four chairs. Then do the following steps. Go to Canva, create a simple flyer saying the menu you offer, the price you offer it at, and the address. Then go into your city center and hand these out. Explain that you want to open your own restaurant, but first you want to get the experience needed to develop the skills that will eventually lead to people actually showing up. Now I'm willing to bet a lot of people will turn you down and say that's not for them. However, I'm also willing to bet that there are people who will say yes, because I know I would be one of them. Now let's come up with the next excuse. Maybe you don't want people in your house. Fine. Go to eBay, order four chairs and one table for whatever budget you have and create a dine in the park experience. Same concept, you prepare the food, you make a little experience out of it, take the same approach. Usually the problems we make up stem from a lack of creativity, grit, or not wanting to be rejected. So basically, to summarize, the only thing that's holding you back is you. So with this new mindset, you should be able to go out and show that your fear of failure, in all honesty, has no value in it existing in your life. So I hope with that knowledge, you are now ready to go and chase your dreams. If there is a problem that you're struggling with and you don't feel like you have the creativity to come up with it send me a dm or drop us a comment below and i'll see if i can help you in some way try and figure it out and otherwise one final request if you enjoyed this video then subscribe for more thanks for watching